Sire, I have more news. Oh, um, yes. Well, it seems that the fighting has gone Enough. exactly as you... I would like to know what you intend to accomplish, Father. Should we not be fighting the Darkspawn instead of each other? The nobility should be brought into line and then the Darkspawn defeated. This is no true blight, Anora. Only Kalen's vanity demanded it be so. Beg pardon, sir. But blight or no, we may not have the manpower to face the Darkspawn soon. Kalen approached your legions for support, did he Never. not? Marek and I drove those bastards out! Not roll out the welcome for the now. We need help, Father. We cannot deal with this crisis alone. Ferelden will stand on its own. I will lead it through this, Anora. You must have faith in me. Did you kill Kalen? Kalen's death was his own doing. Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attack the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them. wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. I can tell you that. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva, very powerful and renowned for always getting the job done, so to speak. Someone went to great expense to hire this man. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the crows out here. Back where I come from, we're rather infamous. Oh, fine. Is that what you Fereldins do? Mock your prisoners? <laughs> Such cruelty. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. Oh, well, that's between Loghain and the Crows, and between the Crows and myself. Isn't that what we're establishing now? 
<laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause, so let me serve you instead. To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Possibly. I happen to know their wily ways, however. I can protect myself as well as you. Uh, not that you seem to need much help. And if not, well, it's not as if I had many alternatives to start with, is it? I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing. That's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you're the sort who would do the same thing. In which case I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice and would make me marginally more useful to you. And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I am yours. Is that fair? Why? Because I am skilled at many things, from fighting to stealth and picking locks. I could also warn you should the Antivan crows attempt something more sophisticated now that my attempts have failed. I also know a great many jokes. Twelve massage techniques, six different card games. I do wonderful at parties, no? What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. A fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. Welcome, Zivran. Having an Antivan crow join us sounds like a fine plan. Oh, you are another companion to be, then? I wasn't aware such loveliness existed amongst adventurers, surely. Or maybe not. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. Yes. Stop right there, outsider. The Dalish have camped in this spot. I suggest you go elsewhere, and quickly. I find that hard to believe. What business could we Dalish possibly have with a group like yours? Seeing as you are obviously no simple trespasser, I will leave it to the Keeper to decide the importance of your business. In the camp, I suggest you keep your hands to yourself, and remember that our arrows are still trained on you. Follow me. Hmm. I see we have guests. Who are these strangers, Mithra? I have precious little patience and less time to spend on outsiders today. I understand, but this one claims to have important business with our people. I see. Tell me, stranger, what business could you possibly have with us? We have our own issues we must deal with, as you can see. 
You might have simply said so to begin with. Masiranus Mithra, you may return to your post. Manuvinen Keeper. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I am Zathrian, the Keeper of this clan, its guide and preserver of our ancient lore. And you are? Manners from a Shemlin. Interesting. What might be your mission here? Have you come to spread news of the Blight? I had already sensed the corruption spreading in the South. The existence of the Blight is not news to me. I would have taken the clan north by now, had we the ability to move. Sadly, as you can see, we do not. Yes, it seems like you've had your own troubles. What are the odds? I imagine you are here regarding the treaty we signed centuries ago. Unfortunately, we may not be able to live up to the promise we made. This will require some explanation. Please, follow me. The clan came to the Brazilian forest one month ago, as is our custom when we enter this part of Ferelden. We are always wary of the dangers in the forest, but we did not expect the werewolves would be lying in wait for us. They ambushed us, and though we drove the beasts back, much damage was done. Many of our warriors lie dying as we speak. Even with all our magic and healing skill, we will eventually be forced to slay our brethren to prevent them from becoming beasts. The Blight's evil must be stopped. But we are in no position to uphold our obligations. I am truly sorry. The affliction is a curse that runs rampant in their blood, bringing great agony and then ultimately either death or a transformation into something monstrous. The only thing that could help them must come from the source of the curse itself. And that... that would be no trivial task to retrieve. Within the Brazilian forest dwells a great wolf. We call him Witherfang. It was within him that the curse originated, and through his blood that it has been spread. If he is killed and his heart brought to me, perhaps I could destroy the curse. But this task has proven too dangerous for us. I sent some hunters into the forest a week ago, but they have not returned. I cannot risk any more of my clan. We would assist with the Blight, of course, and you would have our gratitude. I must warn you that more than werewolves lurk in the Brazilian forest. It has a history full of carnage and murder, you see. Where there is so much death, the veil separating the spirit realm from our own becomes thin allowing spirits to possess things, living or dead. But if you can indeed help, then I wish you luck. Make them quick, if you please. I have much to do here. My apprentice Lanaya or Seirel, the clan's storyteller, could provide you with answers just as easily. Watch for the white wolves. They are his eyes and ears in the forest. There is not much to say. It stemmed originally from Witherfang, but now any werewolf may infect someone with it. No, the ones from this forest, however, do. It is possible, but not guaranteed. The only way to protect against the curse is not to be bitten. You will know within a matter of days. You will begin to sweat and vomit. And most tellingly, your temper will become wild and uncontrollable. If that happens to you, you should seek out Witherfang even more swiftly. Your mission at that point will be rather... personal. That is a long tale I do not have time to tell. Ask Sayrel about it if you wish. 
Go on, then. I must return to caring for my people. Creator's speed on your way. All right. Please leave that be. If you have need of equipment, I am sure Master Verithorn can help you. Please do not lie to me. I find it most unbecoming. I'm Darren Grey Warden. My name is Lanaya. I am Zathrian's first, what you might call an apprentice, perhaps. I've been studying under the Keeper all my life. I am a bit curious of the outside world. Do you mind if I ask you a question or two? I hear the human cities are very large, thousands upon thousands of souls all packed together in their houses. Is that true? How very loud that must be with everyone talking all at once. I try to imagine those of our people living in such a place, surrounded by walls of stone and indifference. It is a difficult thought. It would be worthwhile to see them with my own eyes. But I do not think I can leave the clan. Perhaps I'm too much of a coward. That is a kind offer, but my work is here. One day, the Keeper will be no more, and I must be ready to lead our clan forward. I have one more question. Though I'm not sure you can answer it. Do the humans ever regret what they did to us? And yet, even if some regret, they do nothing. A poet once wrote of them, before the fall of the Dales. Like dragons they fly, glory upon wings. Like dragons they savage, fearsome pretty things. But you don't need me to quote poetry to you. Forgive me. Perhaps you have some questions of your own. Nothing that you could not ask Zathrian himself. He is the keeper of this clan and has been for a very long time. He is also a very good man who has lost much. The Dalish are everything to him, and he would do anything to protect them. I really shouldn't talk about that. That's something you should ask him about yourself. They have reason. Since the days of Arlathan, my people have been either subjugated or homeless. It was our ancestral home long ago when the humans first came to these lands. We were free then and immortal. We did not know how to deal with the humans, and in the end, they turned their power against us and destroyed our Lathan. Our ancestors were enslaved, and our culture lost forever. The Tevinter Imperium was a force to be reckoned with. It was ruled by mages with powerful blood magic. Though our Lathan fought, they lost. Not to my knowledge. According to the old tales, the human mages sank Arlathan into the ground, crushing it beneath the rock. Shemlin, we call them. Quick children. I suppose it takes a certain arrogance to look upon another people as children, no? Perhaps we should be more heedful of our own role in Arlathan's loss. Even so, it was a bitter lesson to learn. One we are not grateful for. It requires an individual to prove he is not the outsider we have come to expect. Your own task to help our clan is certainly a step in the right direction. Certainly. As you wish. Darth Shirel.
Uh, hello? I am Kamen, a hunter apprentice. Though I wish I could become a real hunter. I shouldn't be talking about this to an outsider. You wouldn't understand. I suppose there's no harm in it. It's not like you can help me. I've been an apprentice for too long. To become a true hunter, I must bring back the pelt of the beast I killed myself. A boar or a wolf or something. I wanted to hunt in the forest, but we're forbidden to enter because of the attack. But the real problem is Gaina. She's my heart's desire. I have asked for her hand, but she cruelly refuses it. She will not bond with an apprentice, she says, and calls me a child. I am no child. If I was a hunter, I could prove it, but I cannot hunt and... And Gaina will never bond with me. I feel so helpless. I shouldn't have brought it up. Just leave me to my misery. You think I haven't thought about this? There's nothing I can do. No, I, I couldn't do that. I must kill the beast myself. It is my rite of passage to become a full hunter. I suppose you could, but what good would that do? The situation hasn't changed. Really? I... I I'm willing to try anything. I could reward you? I have a book of our history written in the common tongue. The Keeper wrote it and gave it to my father before he died. If nothing else, you could sell it. It must be worth something in the human lands. Siranas. Oh, Ma Siranas. I will pray to the Goddess of Love that you are successful. Andaran Atitian outsider. You spoke to him? What did he say? Oh. I don't expect an outsider to understand our ways, but I just can't bond with Kamen. He's been a hunter apprentice for over two years now, and he's yet to slay a proper beast. Each time he's tried, something has gone wrong. Perhaps the creators do not wish us to bond. I cannot bond with an apprentice hunter, can I? But what if he never becomes a proper hunter? What will become of our family? Oh, you are right! I have made poor Kamen miserable. No wonder he cannot complete his hunt. Masiranas, thank you. You have helped me put this into perspective. I will go and speak to Kamen. Kamen, I have been a fool. Gaina? Wh what do you mean? Have you changed your mind? I have. The outsider has helped me to see that I was wrong. I have made you miserable, and I should not have. But what about my hunt? <sighs> I don't care about that. I know you will pass your hunt in time, and we will be happy. Us and our children. Thank you, Gaina. You've made me a happy man. I feel blessed by the gods today. We are both very grateful for the part you've played in bringing us together. How marvelous you are. I am so happy. This is so wonderful. Young love allowed to flourish. Does anyone else feel the urge to vomit? No? Tis just me? Here, take this. It's been in my family for a very long time, but I hope it plays some part in your battle against the Darkspawn. It's the very least we could do. Who 
comes. Oh, I beg your pardon, stranger. I was so busy attending to the Hala, I did not hear your approach. My name is Alora. I am the Master Herder in charge of caring for the Hala. Not as exciting as being a Grey Warden, but the Hala are vital to us. They are the noble beasts that pull our Aravel. What humans call land ships. They are our companions, and our guides. We ride the Hala, but never with reins or a saddle. It is the Hala who decide where to lead us, and our privilege that they take our Aravel with them. In return, it's the herder's job to speak to the Hala and care for their needs. It's a bond of friendship, and not servitude. I fear she may have been bitten during the werewolf attack. I have tried speaking with her, but she is too agitated for me to understand. The curse would not affect her as it would us, but it would still be lethal. And it may prove contagious to the other Hala as well. I can find no wound on her, but if she's truly ill, then... Then I will have to put her out of her misery, for her sake as well as that of the others. I don't know. Do you have any skills that might help her? If you do, I would be grateful. Yes, that's it, she's calming down. That's it, love. Be calm. Tell me what troubles you. Ah, I see. It is her life mate who is sick, not her. He was bitten on the leg during the attack, and she fears greatly for him. I did not realize another hollow was injured. This will allow me to prevent the sickness from spreading to the entire herd. Masiranus, thank you. You have done my clan a great boon this day. I will always be grateful for your help. What are you doing? You've warped the wood completely. Did you leave it out in the rain? No, Master Ferrothorn. I, uh, I think I just used too much heat. You're not smelting ore like a Durgenlin. This is living wood. It requires patience and delicate hands, not more heat. My actions bring me sorrow, Master Ferrothorn. And so they should. Truly the art will be lost to us forever at this rate. Throw away your dead wood and start anew, and I shall speak to our guest. You're most welcome here, stranger. Is there anything I might do to help you in your task? I am no merchant, but let us trade. Perhaps there's something here which will be of value to you. It is good to see you again. Have you need of something? I'm the clan's craftsmaster. It's my responsibility to learn what I can of the ancient elven arts of shaping wood and ore. In truth, we Dalish know little of the art compared to what we once did. And even what we know has taken us many lifetimes to achieve. There is wood that, if treated properly, is as hard as steel but far lighter. It grows only in this forest. Ironbark. The Keeper has forbidden us from entering the forest to collect the wood. This means I cannot make our finest crafts for years to come. I would be hesitant to ask it of you, but if you should come across iron bark, I suppose there would be no harm in gathering some. It is blue and very distinctive. You can only harvest the bark which has fallen off the tree from age. Now, if you find some, bring it to me, and I will craft it for you. I excel in making blades from the iron bark, or, or perhaps a breastplate, provided there's enough wood, that is. That would please me, so long as our hunters come first. Darth Shiro, may the Creators visit fortune upon you. I'm Darren Atitian, stranger. I am Athras. I hope the others have not been too harsh in their treatment of you. That is very generous of you. Most would assume we are unkind as a rule, and that is not the case. Especially not to a Grey Warden. 
but we have lost much, and it is easy to forget simple niceties at such a time. I understand you will search for the wolves in the Brazilian forest. I would join you, but Zathrian has forbidden me. None of us are happy about this situation, and I least of all. But I shouldn't speak too much about this, especially with an outsider. I am sure you have little interest in my problems. It's odd to talk so freely with a stranger, but perhaps you can help me. My wife Denyla and I both fought the werewolves in the ambush. She was injured so gravely the curse spread rapidly in her. Zathrian fought hard to ease her pain, but there was little he could do. And though he says that Denyla is dead, he will not let me see her... her body. I am beginning to believe she became a werewolf, and that it is being kept from me so I do not go chasing after her. If I could just know if Denyla is alive or what happened to her, then I could be at peace. I have an amulet made by our craftsmen. It's not much, but I would be happy to give it to you in return for any news. spoken truly, my brothers and sisters. The Dalish send a human of all things to repay us for our attack, to put us in our place. What bitter irony. You speak to Swift Runner. I lead my cursed brothers and sisters. Turn back now. Go back to the Dalish and tell them that you have failed. Tell them we will gladly watch them suffer the same curse we have suffered for too long. We will watch them pay. Was it not Zathrian who sent you? He wishes only our destruction, never to talk. You know nothing, do you? Nothing of us, and even less of those you serve. You are a fool, and we are done talking. Run from the forest while you can. Run to the Dalish, and tell them they are doomed. I do not wish to fight you, but our enemy has sent you to us. And now you force our hand. Hey! Come, brothers and sisters! Swift Runner calls you to battle! Drive this invader from our midst! <laughs> Enough! The forest has eyes of its own, and it shall deal with you. You have been warned. Who, ah, uh, who comes? We were sent to find Witherfang, bring his heart, attacked. I... Uh... And Darren Atitian, Grey Warden. Our scouts saw you approaching and tell me you carry the body of one of our hunters with you. Ah, Dagon. He is wounded, but I think he will live. I am glad we were able to help him. Thank the Maker we returned to the Dalish in time. He must have watched over this man. 
Or perhaps his own gods were watching out for him. And perhaps they just know the Maker by another name. Believe what you wish. It seems to me that they should be thanking the Grey Warden more than some absent god. But who am I to judge? Ma Sirenas, your help is appreciated. Come, Letheline, let us take Dagon to the Keeper, and quickly. If we are lucky, we may still save him. How can this be? I sense no curse inside of thee. Could it be instead a lie? There is no need. Why even try? you take, such chaos is sown within thy wake. Allow me a moment to welcome thee. I am called the Grand Oak, sometimes the Elder Tree. It rhymes? It is a rhyming tree. One can only imagine what manner of spirit is involved here. And unless thou thinkst it far too soon, might I ask of thee a boon? I have but one desire, to solve a matter very dire. As I slept one early morn, a thief did come and steal an acorn. All I have is my being, my seed. Without it, I am alone indeed. I cannot go and seek it out. Yet I shall die if left without. My wooden skin has some magic, see, and part of it I can give to thee. In the center of the forest the wares do dwell, or so go the tales my fellows tell. But they cannot be followed there. The forest doth protect wares. Perhaps wares use magic to command the trees. All I know is they move as they please. The forest would see thee as a tree, and so no harm would come to Wilt thou then perform the task? Wilt thou save me, as I ask? Go to the east to find this man. I shall await. Do what thou can.
please help. Listen. I am not the mindless beast I appear to be. They. I am cursed. Turned into this creature. A curse. It. It burns in me. I fled into the forest. The werewolves, they took me in, but I had to return. I had to. Careful. These werewolves might have laid a trap for us or something. You never know. You are human. I am. I was once an elf. One of the Danish folk. <laughs> to know of my clan. The Keeper sent you? Then you seek with a fang. I have, but... It is not what you think. But there is no time to explain. You must listen. My name is Denial. My husband... He is called Athras. Please, you must bring him a message. Oh, the poor woman. She's in such pain. The staff I wear. Bring it to him. <laughs> Tell him I love him. Tell him <laughs> I am dead. And with the gods, I beg you. I want him to be at peace. <laughs> He is a good man. Please do not let him suffer thinking of me. Oh, the pain. The curse is fire in my blood. Please hand it for me. Hand it quickly. What I know, if you promise to end my pain, then then do this. The werewolves are no longer violent animals. They have overcome the curse. Like I have. There is a ruin in the center of the forest. Can you may find them there. They will think you mean to kill them. I can tell you no more. The pain it is too much. Gods, bless you.
My acorn is still gone, so I pray to thee. Hast thou any news for me? My joy soars to new heights indeed. I am reunited with my seed. As I promised, here it be. I hope its magic pleases thee. Keep this branch of mine with thee, and pass throughout the forest free. I wish thee well, my mortal friend. Thou brought my sadness to an end. May the sunlight find you, thy days be long, thy winters kind, and thy roots be strong. Forest has not been vigilant enough. Still, you come. You are stronger than we could have anticipated. The Dalish chose well, but you do not belong here, outsider. Leave this place. Sent by the treacherous Dalish to kill with a fang. I will not stand by and allow that to happen. And they deserve no less. You are an intruder in our home. You come to kill as all your kind do. We have learned this lesson well. Here, Witherfang protects us. Here we learn our names and our beloved. We will defend Witherfang and this place with our lives.
We do not wish any more of our people hurt. I ask you this now, outsider. Are you willing to parley? That was different. The lady believes that the Dalish have not told you everything, so she has asked that you be brought to her. She means you no harm, provided your willingness to parley in peace is an honest one. Follow me. But I warn you, if you break your promise and harm her, I will come back from the Fade itself to see you pay. <sighs> I bid you welcome, mortal. I am the Lady of the Forest. You will not speak to the Lady of this manner! Hush, Swift Runner. Your urge for battle has only seen the death of the very ones you've been trying to save. Is that what you want? No, my lady. Anything but that. And the time has come to speak with this outsider, to set our rage aside. I apologize on Swift on his behalf. He struggles with his nature. Truer words were never spoken. But few could claim the same as these creatures, that their very nature is a curse forced upon them. No doubt you have questions, mortal. There are things that Zathrian has not told you. It was Zathrian who created the curse that these creatures suffer. The same curse that Zathrian's own people now suffer. Centuries ago, when the Dalish first came to this land, a tribe of humans lived close to this forest. They sought to drive the Dalish away. Zathrian was a young man then. He had a son and daughter he loved greatly. And while out hunting, the human tribe captured them both. <sighs> the humans tortured the boy, killed him. The girl they raped and left for dead. The Dalish found her, but she learned later she was with child. She killed herself. Indeed they did. Zathrian came to this ruin and summoned a terrible spirit, binding it to the body of a great wolf. So Witherfang came to me. Witherfang hunted the humans of the tribe, Many were killed, but others were cursed by his blood, becoming twisted and savage creatures. Twisted and savage, just as Witherfang himself is. They were driven into the forest. When the human tribe finally left for good, their cursed brethren remained, pitiful and mindless animals. Until I found you, my lady. You. Gave me peace. I showed Swift Runner that there was another side to his bestial nature. I soothed his rage and his humanity emerged. And he brought others to me. In 
In part, we seek to end the curse. The crimes committed against Zathrian's children were grave, but they were committed centuries ago by those who were long dead. Word was sent to Zathrian every time the land ships passed this way, asking him to come, but he has always ignored us. We will no longer be denied. <sighs> we spread the curse to his people, so he must end the curse to save them. Please, mortal. You must go to him. Bring him here. If he sees these creatures, hears their plight, surely he will agree to end the curse. Tell him if he refuses, I will ensure that Witherfang is never found. He will never cure his clan. Outside of this chamber, the passage leading back to the surface has been opened for you. Return with Zathrian as soon as you can. Ah, and here you are already. You have carved a safe path through the forest. Safe enough for me to follow, anyhow. <laughs> he wishes to see if we did his work for him. Is that not why you were here now, sorcerer? Do not call me that, witch. I am keeper of this clan, and have done what I must. Did you acquire the heart? So you wish to play games? I can sense you do not have it. Why are you leaving the ruin? Oh, is that what the spirit calls herself now? And what does she want with me, if I might inquire? You do understand that she actually is Witherfang? She is the powerful spirit of this ancient forest that I summoned long ago and bound in the body of the wolf. Her nature is that of the forest itself. Beautiful and terrible, serene and savage, maiden and beast. She is the Lady and Witherfang both, two sides of a single being. The curse came first from her. Those she afflicted with it mirrored her own nature, becoming savage beast as well as human. I find that difficult to believe. They attacked my clan, and they were the same savages then that they have ever been. They deserve to be wiped out and not defended. Come, I will accompany you back to the ruin. Let us go and speak to the spirit, and I will force her into Witherfang's form. He may then be slain and the heart taken. Why? You claim they have regained their minds, but they are still savage beasts. Their nature is unchanged. All they want is revenge, or a release that I will not give them. No, let us take the heart and end it. You were not there. You did not see what, what, what they did to my son, to my daughter, and so many others. You are not Dalish. How can you know how we had to struggle to be safe? How could I have let their crimes go unanswered? I remember them as if it were yesterday. Even if they are more than animals now, they desire nothing but revenge. They will never let my clan be. And what if it is revenge they want, and not talk? Will you safeguard me from harm? I fail to see the purpose behind this, but very well. It has been many centuries now. Let us see what the spirit has to say. So here you are, spirit. <sighs> she is the lady of the forest! You will address her properly! 
You've taken a name, spirit, and you've given names to your pets, these beasts who follow you. It was they who gave me a name, Zathrian, and the names they take are their own. They follow me because I help them to find who they are. Who they are has not changed from whom their ancestors were. Wild savages, worthless dogs. Their twisted shape only mirrors their monstrous hearts. He will not help us, lady. It is as I warned you. He is not here to talk. No, I am here to talk, though I see little point in it. We all know where this will lead. Your nature compels it, as does mine. It does not have to be that way. There is room in your heart for compassion, Zathrian. Surely your retribution is spent. My retribution is eternal, spirit, as is my pain. This is justice, no more. Are you certain your pain is the only reason you will not end this curse? Have you told the mortal how it was created? And so he did. Witherfang and I are bound as one being, but such powerful magic could not be accomplished without Zathrian's own blood. Your people believe you have rediscovered the immortality of their ancestors, Zathrian, but that is not true. So long as the curse exists, so do you. No! That is not how it is! I did it for my people. I did it for my son and my daughter. For them, for justice, I would do anything. The curse would not end with Zathrian's death. His life, however, relies on its existence. And I believe his death plays a part in its ending. Then we kill him! We tear him apart now! For all your powers of speech, you are beasts still. What would you gain from killing me? Only I know how the ritual ends, and I will never do it. Ha! You see? We must kill them all! See? They turn on you as quickly. Do what you have come here to do, Grey Warden, or get out of my way! We're standing for what's right here, no matter what. Then you die with them. All of you will suffer as you deserve. Swift runner, we will not kill him. If there is no room in our hearts for mercy, how may we expect there to be room in his? I cannot do as you ask, spirit. I am too old to know mercy. All I see are the faces of my children, my people. I, I cannot do it. Perhaps I have lived too long. This hatred in me is like an ancient, gnarled root. It has consumed my soul. What of you, spirit? You are bound to the curse just as I am. Do you not fear your end? You are my maker, Zathrian. You gave me form and consciousness where none existed. I have known pain and love, hope and fear, all the joy that is life. 
Yet of all things I desire nothing more than an end. I beg you, Maker, put an end to me. We beg you, show mercy. You shame me, spirit. I am an old man, alive long past his time. Then you will do it? You will end the curse? Yes, I think it is time. Let us... Let us put an end to it. It's over. She's gone. And we're human. I can scarcely believe it. We'll leave the forest, I suppose. Find other humans, see what's out there for us. It should be quite interesting, don't you think? Thank you. We will never forget you. It is done. The essence of the wolf's heart has banished all traces of cursed blood from the hunters. It is too bad that Zathrian had to die. I... I felt it when he departed. I think he was ready to go. I suspected. But Zathrian did not like to talk about that. Nonetheless, the curse is over, and no one else will be subjected to it. It will be difficult to fill Zathrian's shoes. He was our keeper for many centuries, and he will be sorely missed. But I am keeper now. Let me say it officially, then. I hereby swear to uphold the terms of the ancient contract our people formed with the Grey Wardens. Call, and we shall come, with great speed and purpose, and we shall strike at your foes. This I swear. It has been a long time since the Dalish march to war, but I trust that in the end, we shall make a difference for you. You have returned. 
Is there any chance you have news of Denala? You have news? Have you found her? Are, are you certain? That is her scarf. Where did you find her? What's become of her? The keeper told me the truth? Are you certain? Oh, I see. At least she is at peace. Here is the amulet, as I promised. Now I should go and make arrangements. I must mourn my wife as is proper. Dareth Shiral, fare you well. We are working hard to make enough equipment for all of the hunters. Our armaments will be superior to anything else you find on the battlefield. Truly, let me see. Yes, that is indeed iron bark, and a substantial quantity of it as well. Well done. An agreement is an agreement, and I will craft something from this wood for you. What would you like? A bow? Or perhaps a breastplate? I must admit I'm surprised to witness such generosity from an outsider. You have my thanks, and the thanks of my clan for this gift. I will not allow your generosity to go without at least some reward. Come, I shall make something of the wood you bring. I've reformed the wood to my will. It is but a small token of our gratitude, but take it with my blessing. So, let me get this straight. You were a cloistered sister? You must have... I lied to you, you know, about why I left Orle. I didn't feel like talking about it then, what happened to me. Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body, sealed documents. My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries, Nevara and Antiva, among others. It was treason. Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orle. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life as Bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries, it takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. 
I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. The Orlesian guards, they captured me, did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured. And at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. The skills Marjolin taught me were good for something, at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolin out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? You are younger than I, and your nerves yet have some steel in them. Did you feel any fear facing the abominations? The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. Every mage is vulnerable, no matter how accomplished or powerful. That is the first thing we learn, and overconfidence can lead to recklessness. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone. Replaced by madness. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. Of late, I have begun to wonder if... if there is any way an abomination can be... cured. Or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity. Their... humanity. Yes, it is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training, the sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. Now, now. It need not be thought of so crudely. We all do our share of murdering around here, don't we? An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth, and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? 
here I am. Oh, I certainly could, but I won't. I swore to the crows that the things they taught me were to remain a secret. And while, yes, they are already angry at me, I'd rather not push things, you see. If you are truly insistent, well, let me think about it. The crows are already angry at me, yes? Who knows? Here I am. Oh, this should be good. What would you like to discuss? What do you need? Ask away. Yes. As you wish. <laughs> <laughs> 